Let's continue with our control chart examples. So now let's take a look at the control charts for variables or continuous data. So let's start with the individuals and moving range chart data, the IMR data. So if you're at the big blue eye and you went over to the worksheets folder, you'll see our list of worksheets. Let's select IMR, individual moving range, make it a little bit big. And in this case, we're tracking the gob weight. Now a gob is the hunk of glass that's molten before it gets thrown into a mold to turn it into a container or a piece of tableware or whatever. So that's what they call it. They call it a gob. So this is the weight of the gob of glass before it is molded. And we're tracking this over time. So this is a continuous variable of weight. It's being measured on a scale. And let's see what it looks like over time. So that's stat, control charts. And this is going to be a variables chart for individuals. And we're going to select the IMR individuals and moving range chart. So the variable that we're going to study is C3, the gob weight. So we would want to select C3 by double clicking on it. And that's all we have to do. We can just say OK. So here we have our individual moving range chart of gob weight. Now of note, here are the individual values the green line is the center line. That's the overall average of all of these individual values. Then we have estimates of plus or minus three standard deviations about that average. That's the lower and the upper control limits. Now to calculate those control limits, we used information from our moving range chart. And the moving range chart depicts the variation we have in our process. So the moving range, it starts with, notice that there's no data point here for the first one. I take the first two data points here, take the difference, and that's the range of difference between the first and the second data point, and that's my first data point in the moving range chart. So then as I subsequently go from value to value to value, I'm tracking the amount of difference between values down here on the moving range. So up here we have our sample to sample variation, and in here we have the variation between the samples. Alright, now notice that we don't see any special causes depicted down here. So that validates that these are usable control limits because there's no special causes down here. Because if I had special causes down here, that would increase my overall average moving range, which is the average of all the variability, and that is used to calculate these control limits. So if this was inflated, it would inflate my control limits. The other thing that you have to pay attention to with an individual moving range chart is the fact that we have tracked all the individual values. We do need to test to make sure that the, that the distribution of those individuals is normally distributed. And if it is, then any of the rule sets that we have for testing if we have any special causes would be valid because they're all based on the standard normal distribution. All right, well, let's take a look at some subgrouped variation uh, data with an X bar and R chart. So I'll go up to the big blue eye and we'll go over here to the show worksheets folder and let's choose the X bar R chart data. Now, in this case, we have on any given day, we have eight data points. There's four data points in the morning and four data points in the afternoon. So we're going to make a subgroup of four data points to evaluate the morning and a subgroup of four data points for the afternoon. Now when we put together this subgroup, so here would be a subgroup, there's one, two, three, four data points. So we take this data set here and we'd calculate an average value and we'd plot that and then we'd look at the minimum value and the maximum value and we take the range and so that gives us an, an estimate of the variation within this subgroup of data. And so that's our variation statistic. And then the average value gives us an idea of the centering of this group of data. So let's take a look at that. So that's stat, control chart. And this is a variables chart for subgroups. And we're going to select an X bar and R chart. So our data is column C3 data 
and our subgroup size that we've selected is going to be a value of 4. So we type in 4 there, and then we can say OK. So here is our X bar and R chart. Now the X bar, this portion of the chart, is tracking the average value of each one of those different subgroups of four data points. So we see the variation from subgroup to subgroup to subgroup over time. The center line is the overall average of these averages. And then we have upper and lower control limits, which are estimates of three standard deviations above and below the mean. The beauty of the X bar and R chart is the fact that since we subgrouped the data and we are charting the average values, the average values, their distribution is always normally distributed. So the rules that we have for evaluating the control chart are always going to hold true. So regardless of the underlying distribution of the individual data points, once we subgroup them, the distribution of the average values of those subgroups is always normally distributed, which is a key feature. Now down here is the range portion of the chart. Now we would like the range portion of the chart to not exhibit any special causes. That means that if it doesn't, then our control limits are going to be valid. So these are the range values from the subgroup. So what was the biggest difference between the biggest and the smallest value here? That is the range, and then we track those over time. So this is an evaluation of the variation we saw within a subgroup, and then this tracks the variability that we see from group to group to group as our average values change. So that's an X bar R control chart for tracking data over time, continuous data, variables data, and we can use this to monitor and maintain our gains.